We now have our four different lines created. Let's play the animation and see how the lines follow the surface of the character. And this is directly after exporting them from Lineworks. This is with no additional work or tweaking done. In the last video, I mentioned that there are two different types of lines and two different types of rigs for a total of four unique lines. Let's first take a look at the grease pencil lines and its rig setup as it is the simplest. For each point, we have our point control that can be positioned and rotated to change the shape as well as scale to change the sharpness. In addition to the main point control, we have two handle controls. These will control the individual sides of the curve for each point and they can be rotated and scaled individually. This point setup is pretty much the same for all line types. This is the limit of the amount of control that the rig gives you for grease pencil lines because grease pencil has less procedural control currently. Now let's go over the two different rig types with these grease pencil lines. The two types are individual roots and rooted tips. Our bottom line here is the individual roots and each point is independent of the other points. So if we move one, the others will stay in place. Now our top line is the rooted tips line. If we move the middle point, we can define the shape of the line. And if we move the tips of the line, the shape will follow in between the tips. These two rig setups are the same for the two mesh lines. Next, let's take a look at the mesh strip lines. These lines are set up in the same way as the grease pencil lines, just with a bit more control. The first difference is the addition of thickness controls for each of the individual points. With these bones, we can scale up and down the thickness per point on the mesh lines. And the other main difference is that we have this panel here that gives us procedural control over the look of our line. The first control we're going to look at is this eye-shaped bone that controls the visibility of our line. If we scale this down, we can turn off the visibility of our line for the view and the render. Then we have these two bones at the edges that look like arrows pointing inwards. These are our line taper controls. We have a taper control for each side of the line. So if we scale these down, the line will get more or less tapered. Then we have these two arrow bones that are controlling the shrinking of the line along its curve. When we move these bones, we are shrinking the mesh along the curve of the rig. Next, we have this T-shaped bone. This controls the overall thickness of our line. And if we scale it down, we thin the line. If we scale it up, we thicken the line. Our last two bones are our noise controls. The N-shaped bone controls the shape of our noise, and the plus sign looking bone controls the amount of the noise. If we scale up this bone, it will increase the amount of noise so we can better see what is happening. And with our noise control, we can move it along its x-axis to move the noise down the line. 
and use the Y and Z axis to give an evolution to the noise. We can also rotate and scale the noise with this control. So these are our procedural controls for the mesh lines. All of these bones are put into individual bone groups, so if you need to select all bones of a specific type, you can use the bone groups to do that quickly. To control the shape of our grease pencil lines, we have to use the grease pencil sculpt mode and keyframe the changes. In Blender 2.80, we can't sculpt on the armature deformed lines. We can only sculpt on its original position. So I suggest using the grease pencil overlays and selecting the grease pencil lines in edit mode so you can clearly see where the original position is. But this seems to have been fixed in 2.81 and 2.82, so hopefully it will no longer be a problem. With the Grease Pencil Interpolate Sequence Operator, we can interpolate the changes between the keyframes. And with this keyframe Grease Pencil Sequence, we can still use the rig controls to change the overall shape. Keep in mind, it's important that you do not draw any new frames because the current lines are weight painting to the rig, and if you draw a new line, it will lose that weight painting. These are all the differences between our different line types. I personally prefer to use the mesh individual root lines because it gives the most procedural control and the ease of keyframing the bones is a really nice plus. Feel free to experiment with the different lines and decide for yourself which you prefer.